Cultivate put out this holiday guide for local artists so that people that want to support local in old timey catalog where they can flip <laughs> through and go, Ooh, there's, there's some literary stuff. stuff. Ooh, there's some painting. Ooh, there's jewelry. Welcome to Creative Ops, a podcast for creative people. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Creative Ops, a podcast for creative people. I am Christopher Talon. All right, today I've got Mallory Shotwell, and Mallory is an interdisciplinary artist and curator here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and she is also the founder and director of Cultivate, which is a team of over 40 artists, curators, teachers, and industry experts who are firmly invested in the idea of celebrating living modern artists and supporting local artists, giving them classes in both how to be better technical artists and also in the business of art. We talk about storytelling, art, art education, how to make it in art, what curators are looking for, and uh, some marketing advice and social media and website advice for you guys. So enjoy this one with Mallory. She's great. This is what will be an annual local artist holiday guide. And we are bringing in any artist living and working within 100 miles of Grand Rapids, which is where our gallery is based. And we picked up, you know, 100 to define local as guided by our farmer friends (laughs) and what that could mean. So within that, we have over 200 artists that we're sharing in visual work, fine art, literary work, music, jewelry, home goods, and so much more. And really, yeah, serving to create that, you know, Toys R Us experience to make it, you know, like a catalog experience to make it as easy as possible for people to have that level of excitement, to circle what they want, to easily connect to and buy from that artist living and working in the community. And this was really, you know, just, again, driven to, like, create this visual catalog for people. Yeah. It's a 49-page guide that's only art. And yeah. <laughs> and it's incredible. And that's available on our website. And we printed some as well, and then they disappeared immediately, which is exactly <laughs> what we want. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's going to be, uh, again, something that we do every single year, and we're just going to print more and more of them. <laughs> I was exposed to more and more different types of art you know like in eighth grade I learned about installation art for the first time and it was like different is this in Wisconsin this isn't I grew up in Michigan you grew up Um, in Michigan yeah so I grew up here um and so it was like different parts of my brain like unlocking to go aha there's a different way to be you know I think the representation of art is is one in which a like arts can never be a job and be like it's only in museums and see like it's only 2d you yeah. know but to see like it's so much bigger and brighter and has so many more voices involved um it was you know seeing installation art and and creating that and then i actually um got a degree in teaching um so i was a teacher for a long time and learning um, how to see and understand people and see and support people was really, really, really like foundational to what my art practice has become. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah. I don't, I don't mean to no, interrupt no, no, you you're again. Good. Yeah, no, you're good. When I, when I taught too, it, um, you know, if you, if you try to be really good at it, I guess, it forces you to like go, you know what, other people see the world differently. Other yeah. people process the yes. world differently. And you have to at least respect it and try to like meet them halfway, even if you don't fully understand it. A hundred percent. Because a lot of people say that, but it's, it's hard when you have to put that into practice with, you know, 50 to 125 different kids every day. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was a Montessori teacher specifically. And so with that, it is. Which is like for anybody that doesn't know is more of like a child led 
type learning. You kind of give them the tools and they go, I want to do this. And you go, okay. And you support mm -hmm. them, right? Yeah. Yeah. More or yeah. less. I'm very vague. No, right. <laughs> Yeah. And it's very like person led and led with respect, you know, so to go like you might be uh, an auditory learner and a visual learner and I might be, uh, you know, a visual learner and a kinesthetic learner. Like I have to move in order for my brain to sink it and, yeah. and to know that like what you the way that you learn is beautiful and amazing and the way that I learn is beautiful and amazing and respecting that to go we're all different and that's phenomenal um, changed everything. And, and in my Montessori teaching, we learned how to observe people and how to love people really, really, truly, holistically. Mm. And it changed everything for me. It changed how I interact with the world, how I interact with art, how I, how I teach. Um, so it was just amazing. Um, so within that, I was always making art and doing all these things and, you know, took all the art classes available in, in high school. And I was always just thinking like, oh, I really love it. This is really neat and feeds my soul in a way. But then I took, you know, AP art in high school and I realized like art is like breathing and I need it to live. Um, and it changed my relationship with art. It changed my relationship with like, no matter what I'm doing or how I'm engaging with the world, I have to make sure that art is part of my practice. Yeah. Um, and art teachers, I got to say too, are just amazing people because I remember I, I was a terrible student. I think we might have mentioned that <laughs> a minute ago. But when I was a senior, I was taking an art class and one of the art teachers said, hey, hey you're, you're not, not on, on the, the AP, AP, but, but if, if you, you want to come, come on the AP, AP field, field trip to Chicago, Chicago you, can. you can. And I was like, nice. nice. And, you know, because they're like, this, this person, person really loves, loves this. this. They're yeah. just yeah. not going to do the work when we go home and say, hey, go home and do this unsupervised now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other teachers aren't aren't usually that quick to reach out or observant just because I, maybe just because you don't really get to know the person as much right. teaching math. Everyone is trying to solve the same problem. Right. You're trying to teach them all to do it the same way. And in art, right. it's more like, how do you feel? Right. Right. And like, how, how do you, you know, what I love about the humanities, um, you know, English or art or, you know, various subjects is that, you know, the, the output can be different as long as you can justify it. So I would, yeah. I would stretch that really hard in, yeah. I mean, in, I, in high school. Like, how can I um, not quite, I would challenge myself to be like, how can I not quite follow the assignment? <laughs> yeah. Um, but justify it enough so that I can, I can do well. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. I, after, after I got out of the military, I went to Aquinas and it's a, anybody that doesn't know Aquinas College in Grand Rapids is a small uh, liberal arts school. And as an English major there, I constantly was like, you know, I don't really like the assignment, the way that it's worded. Can I do this instead? And they're yeah. like, yeah, sure. Sure. But you couldn't, you couldn't do that, at, yeah. you know, in like a big high school right. or if you went to a really large university where you had like 150 people in an auditorium with mm -hmm. you taking that class. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I went to Aquinas too. Yay. Yay. <laughs> I went when I was older because like I'm almost 40 now, uh -huh. but um, I think I was 29 when I graduated. Uh-huh. So, yeah, just over back in 2012, I graduated. Awesome. Yay. Yeah. It's been yeah. Years. Yay. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and they're still asking for money. I love you. I'll give you some. I'll give you some. I'll give you, some. <laughs> you might get a sweatshirt. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. There you go. Actually, if you ever do go back over to campus, uh -huh. that's one of the places where you can find my books is in the library. There. Oh, that's so great. Yay. Oh, that's like super it. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I was a, a teacher um, at a Montessori school and just loving it. And again, like all the while making making art and uh, as as born out of like fabulous conversations um, can be or like fantastic dialogue can be. Um, my friends and I found ourselves at like three in the morning drinking wine, talking about the nature of love. Mm. And, you know, at the time... Gosh, how old was I? I don't know, 26, 27, I don't know. Um, but, you know, I wasn't 50 years old. I don't know what it's like to be married for 50 years or how love evolves over 50 years. How do people evolve? How does that change? And how people, how do people learn about love? Um, and so out of all of these questions, I just thought, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to interview people um, and ask them what they know um, and and really drawing upon this idea 
that the concept of love is universal and that might be familial or friend or romantic or otherwise. Um, it might be beautiful. It might be hard, but everyone has some experience of it, right? Yeah, for sure. So, hope. I mean, I interviewed 90 people, most of which were strangers and most of which were about two hours each. Um, and I recorded them all and I kept them all confidential, but I would share a sentence or two from each person. Hmm. And that evolved into art workshops and that evolved into, um, uh, you know, citywide, <clears throat> you know, engagements, if you will. Mm. And that evolved into a, an art exhibition that was 45 artists, each visually responding to one of the questions that I asked. Mm. So I asked, like, who taught you love? Or how does love evolve over 50 years or a lifetime? How, um, what do you consider love to be? Um and, and, you know, so many other questions, but every single answer was different. Um, every single answer uh, shared just a wealth of wisdom and experience, and it was incredible. Yeah. And, and the one way that I ended every interview was share, share the, what love is in one word, and every single answer was different. And... Um, this that's such a tall order one word <laughs> right yes yes and 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 this work uh it took about a year um and it launched my art career um and it changed everything for me and it enabled me to uh you know move into like the contemporary art world in a way that I hadn't been as immersed in in the past and so I could take my love of you know storytelling my love of art making my love of community my love of teaching and like bring up like fuse it all together <laughs> and work in a contemporary art gallery um, which is what I did for many 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 years Do discourage people when they say, I, I want to be a writer or I want to be a painter, painter. Yeah. because you are kind of presented with this idea of, well, yeah. listen, all, all the famous painters, painters were poor when they were alive, alive and they were only famous after, after they're, they're dead. dead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, if, if you, you want to make money writing, writing, then you have to you have to be poor doing it for years right. and maybe you'll get a big break. And right. It doesn't have to be that way, no. especially now when <laughs> everything that people used to think about art and self-publishing. Mm-hmm opening your own studio and yeah. putting stuff in there like yeah. that used to be thought of like oh you were just weren't good enough to be in the elite class but right. you know now we're seeing that kind of that whole gatekeeper elite class thing is mm -hmm. if anything it's a facade to <laughs> increase scarcity to drive up prices right 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 so. yeah 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 and that's I, I think representation is just so incredibly important and that representation could be um you know like the work that we do at cultivate in our classes we uh, only teach living contemporary artists. Um, and the reason is which, like, everyone over the course of their life is going to see or learn about Monet, right? Mm -hmm. I, love, I love Monet. I grew up on, on his work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it's beautiful. But how can we share um, and connect our audiences to artists who are living and working today, people that you can message on Instagram? People that you can buy work from now, yeah. um, and further, they're the going to be the influencers of tomorrow. Yeah, like, they're here. They're now. We don't have to wait till they're dead. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And 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 to share their work and to understand that like artists are living and working people, um, is it just it strips away? Yeah, all of that gatekeeping and all of that that like elusiveness, and it makes it more possible when mm. people feel. Like, yes, I can get to know this person, but yes, I can see an artist living and working today and making it as a person who is a full-time professional artist. And how empowering is that? What was the impetus then from being in 
the system and trying to climb the ladder in the in the art world to then kind of going, yeah, you know what, I'm, I'm going to put, put my, my own stuff, stuff out, out there. there, not just yeah. as an artist, yeah. but as a space for other artists and yeah. education and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah. obviously, you're just a natural born educator, so that's that piece kind of fits in. But uh, yeah, what what made you go, I'm doing this, cultivate? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, it, this has been my dream for you know, eight years before Cultivate started. And all the while I was living in and amongst a very vibrant, unified, beautiful arts community in Madison, Wisconsin, Mm. and living in, you know, basically living in, um, but working in this gallery and, um, you know, connected to the university, connected to all of these other big cities. And all the while going, um, one day I'm going to have this thing. One day I'm going to start this thing. And so for like my team, when I introduced everything to them, <laughs> they laughed at me. They were like, you like, it's, it's like in Shawshank Redemption, you know, when he's like, like thought and like worked on it for years and years and years and years and years. And then he finally did it. <laughs> like, yeah. That's, that's what it was like. It was like when I finally laid out all the plans, it was like every, every item, every aspect, every detail of every department if you will Uh of cultivate was was mapped out for eight years in my head and so like the volunteer program the fundraising plan the marketing plan the education plan the classes the details the you know like Mm. the galleries and how things will function and how things will serve and I built the bones of it so that the community would breathe life into it so like um it was just just deeply incredible somebody who's saying like I want to create something that has a life of its own, not, I want to drive this thing. Everybody right. hop on board. I'm doing right. it this way. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, um, creating, yeah, it really is. It was the skeleton and the skeleton was really, mm. really strong. Yeah. But I wanted people to flesh it out with me and gather their great ideas and their inspiration and the stories that they know and the lives that they've led and the things that they need in the community yeah. and flesh it out from there. And that's how Cultivate came to be. Yeah. Um, so Which it's like not eight years in the making and then one year of, of not even one year of, of being an organization. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is great because I won't get into all the political stuff that we were talking about earlier. <laughs> but, you know, coming from a, a meeting where a place that does really cool stuff with arts was denied money from the city that is going to give it to stuff that people were audibly groaning at. They're like, wait, that's getting money? Um, the city itself has kind of not always felt like a, the most welcoming place for artists. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it's super important with that being the case or at least the perception that there are places like this so just as one creative first to another thank you for doing this oh yeah it's an incredible gift quite honestly (laughs) being able to do it at all is an incredible gift yeah yeah both educators so (laughs) when you're like classes I was like oh that's awesome is it gonna be uh, of the visual arts nature is it gonna be poetry is it gonna be oh my gosh self-publishing classes is it gonna be like a little bit of everything or are you kind of dialed in right now with a certain uh niche within the creative network yeah it's um within Grand Rapids there are a lot of um, guided art classes and it has value and it's really fun and it's cool but um uh, everybody like paints the same sunflower, you know. Mm, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so like we do fine art classes, um, but we do it like an art school. Um, so we have like an educational philosophy that really loves and respects people. We actively teach um, living contemporary artists. We actively teach principles of art and design. We actively reinforce the language of all of these things, so that at the end of the day, people feel validated and confident and successful in the work that they're doing so that they're safe to experiment so that they're safe to grow in whatever it is that they're doing yeah so with that said um everything is fine art based so we're doing everything from you know an intro to art drawing painting but also a huge comics program, um, you know, and to speak to the storytelling, we're doing a teen class that's a short film through TikTok. 
Um, (laughs) And, uh, and, and really, yeah, just, uh, a smattering of classes across the board. So it could be like honing more in on like drawing, for example, it's, um, you know, a charcoal class or an oil pastels class or a life drawing class or drawing from observation or, you know, with painting, it would be, you know, learning oils or watercolor or expressions of watercolor abstract or uh, gosh, like everything basic. Yeah. Just we'll, we'll run a hundred classes a year in this space alone. The TikTok class sounds especially interesting to me because so pumped. I mean, that's, you know, you're, A, you're speaking kids' language Mm -hmm. and you're keeping your thumb on the pulse of what people are actually doing. Because just the other day I saw um, two women doing like a dance with the phone set up and like (laughs) they're making a TikTok. Uh And then they finished the video like pointing at this building. And I was like, yeah. Afterwards, it's like, oh, are you guys promoting something? They're like, oh, we're selling selling this building. building. We're realtors. I'm like, bruh. Everybody is on TikTok. Yeah. Everybody's on TikTok doing business. Yeah. People doing dances selling cars. I know. It's so cool. Yeah. And so to use to use like to be really innovative and use different different um things as mediums to create is is a super cool job of the artist. And it really zeroes in like everybody would probably like to go to film school, but not everybody can afford the digital cameras or the film or the have the time to try to like mm-hmm. light and block and do all these things yeah. for hours and hours and then edit right. it down to 40 minutes. But you know, <laughs> you can say, Hey, listen, here's composition, here's angles, here's this, yeah. here's how to just make something that's interesting that people will actually be paying uh-huh. attention to uh-huh. do it. Yeah. Like, Oh, okay. yeah. We were going to do this anyway. At least yeah. this we'll be doing it well. Absolutely. And I, you know, we keep going back to storytelling, but like how to break down a story and how to tell that story yeah. in 90 seconds. Or three minutes, you know, and how can you convey those things and and do so in a way that's visually interesting and with the various frames? Mm, I love it. I can't wait for that one. Yeah. If you if you ever need like a test subject, you can be like, here's, here's a man, man who has no, no visual, visual aesthetic, aesthetic whatsoever, whatsoever <laughs> trying to sell a book. How, how would you sell his book if you were him? <laughs> I'm, I'm down. Um well, speaking of which, where does marketing fit into all this and how did you first get into that? Yeah, I think I think marketing ties into my love of learning and um, understanding how and why people learn, right? Mm. So like earlier we were saying, you know, you could be one type of learner and I could be another type of learner. And both of those things are amazing and interesting. Marketing is exactly the same. You know, like the way that one person engages with and takes in the world is different than someone else. Yeah. So how can we utilize and lean into both um, or all different ways so that lots and lots of people can engage with and understand what you're doing? Mm-hmm. And so and that's the big you know, thing that yeah. challenges me because like we said, I have like no no visual aesthetic whatsoever. I can write you a really long story and maybe summarize it. But um, when it comes to trying to push that into the world, I've had other people like, oh, your book takes place in 1996? Dude, rent out a bar and have a 1996 themed karaoke night Yeah, and sell your book to people and give it out for people that come up and do a really good job. I'm like, oh my God, that's amazing. That's I amazing. never would have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like that was off the top of my head. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and really, just marketing is is it's a, like a practice of creativity. And yeah. so, um, it's it's storytelling ultimately. And you're you're sharing. Um, I like you just keep going back to that now. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, it, you're you're conveying stories visually. Mm-hmm. Um, you're and that is art ultimately. Mm-hmm. Um, so much of of the art that I love conveys stories visually. So, you know, how, how can you create an experience for someone through the work that you're doing and how can you include them in that element? So like, you know, uh, maybe a year ago I started sharing more reels on Instagram and sharing just, um, like behind the scenes of what it is to be an artist. Um, and I was Which doing again, them. Thank you for that because a lot of people liked to have that mystique of like, my process is a mystery. I just, <laughs> I just wake up and everything is amazing. Right. Well, and that's, and, and the flip side of people who don't under, like aren't in the art world. Um, and, and 
don't have a lot of friends that are artists have absolutely no idea <laughs> yeah. to uh, how, how to Jack engage. Jack Kerouac really wrote that entire book in one sitting that he never edited. <laughs> right, right. He found after he was dead, he had trunks full of just drafts that he'd completely tortured himself putting together uh-huh. just right. Yeah. But he told everybody, oh, no, I just write one time and then I'm done. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's so funny. So, I mean, it's like Thanksgiving was a good example where, like, getting together with family and they're like, oh, what do you do? You know, it's the same 20 questions over and over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, so it's like, what do you do? And I'm like, I'm a gallery director and an art curator. And, you know, they're like, have deer in the headlights look. And like, don't know what to do it or how to engage yeah. with that question. You I know? don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know what you do. You know, when you say I, I, I'm, I'm a salesperson, salesperson and a cubicle, cubicle, people have like a, an understanding of what that could mean. But to say curator is like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then you get, I, know, I don't two, know. You only get two weeks paid off. Right. It sucks, right? Yeah, I know, right? Right, yeah, right, some, right. Or just say, to, like, yeah. I'm an artist is like, that could mean anything. You know, yeah, that yeah, could yeah. mean, like, I, I do art sometimes or I exhibit nationally my works in MoMA right now. You know, like, it could mean anything. Yeah. But people don't know how to engage with it because it's so broad. So one of the fun things, I, um, I just started making these reels and they really took off. Um, and just sharing, you know, tips and tricks for artists of mm-hmm. like how to, what to expect in a contract, what to do to prepare your photos, how to get your website ready. And these are like edutainment, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm doing like air quotes. Um, but, uh, to, to share that in a way that's fun and engaging for artists to advance their careers, but also, um, sharing like behind the scenes life of an artist. And it's like silly and quirky and weird. Yeah. And, um, artists really loved and engaged with that but I it was really cool to see the audience of people who don't have any relationship with artists and like what what that is and I heard from so many people that aren't in that community or are in like the arts community um that shared like that helped me understand the world that you're living in Mm -hmm. you know it helped me like engage with um, and what to say, <laughs> you know? So, so like I did a call of like, what do, um, what do people say when you say that you're an artist or what are some of the things that you've heard? And I'm sure you have all your writer stories as well of like, what's your real job, Yeah, you know, or, you still <laughs> doing that? or a lot of right. times people say, Oh yeah, my book's out now. Right. And people just kind of go uh-huh. and look at you right. wide eyed for a second and go, <laughs> So, so next, next week, week I'm taking the kids up to this basketball game. Right, exactly. And they just immediately move And they change the subject. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I mean, it's it's um, just sharing some of those reactions. And that kind of put the lens back on the people who don't know how to engage. And, and then gave them a framework of ways that they can engage. Yeah. And, and ways that they can do things. So. And also lets the mm-hmm. artists know, like... It's not just you. It's not people being unsupportive. Right. Because I took I the first time like uh, I told a bunch of my in laws at a uh, at a party. I'm like, yeah, my my book just came out. It's it's out yeah. there now. You can yeah. buy it. Yeah. And most people didn't ask one follow up question or one follow up statement even. Right. And just it was like kind of like yeah, next week we're renting a place up in. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. All right. But, and That's I, my life. That's my was, whole life. Yeah, I went home and I talked to my wife. I was like, did Thanks. they just not care about me? Right. And they're like, no, I just. You know, like they don't know anybody that does stuff like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and it's so strange, you know, and it's man, the, the things, the things people and there, there's so many things that are, are universal within so many of, of like our fields, like the writing field or the art field or design field, you know, where, where people don't know how to engage, don't know what to say or or the funniest ones are like, oh, you know, um, so you know how to do everything, you know, <laughs> like yeah. you know, or someone will uh um, like my, my professional artwork is more, um, installation based. Um, and while I have some drawing skills, I'm, I'm not the best drawer, drawing artist, you know? So, but people are like, can you, can, can you, you draw, draw my, 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 my nephew? nephew? Can, can you, can you do that for, can you do it right now? Can you do it for free? Can, can you draw his face so I can get can a tattoo on my arm? Right. <laughs> um, and it's, it's like, you know, just, just kind of demystifying this world that, <laughs> feels quite complicated i say that and, all and, the time with that's yeah. what i hope this podcast does is yeah. demystifies the creative process yeah yeah and i think that the people that do cool stuff uh-huh. are just people we're just people who do cool stuff yeah, yeah 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 and that's it's just it's it's awesome um and i think i think anybody can do it yeah. I, I really believe that in my heart yeah yeah <laughs>
Well, maybe not draw, but anybody can <laughs> yeah, follow their creative passions. Oh, I think anybody, I think if anybody wants to learn anything, they can learn it. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's like once you have the skill set, it's just practice, you yeah, know, yeah, and, sure. and determination. Yeah. 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 Like math. Yeah. About math earlier. You know, keep doing the math equation, the same one. Eventually, it's just going to make sense. And you're like, oh, <laughs> I can do this now. You know what? I can show somebody else how to do this. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 And I, I think I can take um, just having taught for so long. It's, it's really, really, really my favorite moment in the whole world to see someone who thinks that they can't do it have the aha moment where they can. Yeah. And to see it's like, <laughs> you know, and and it's magic. Yeah. That's yeah, that's it. That's the moment. That's the sweet spot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. Do you have any tips for people? Um, I was going to say 40 and up, like I'm almost 40 now, and that's probably why I'm so bad at social media. I'm 39, so. <laughs> Me too. 1983, May 19th. What? No, I'm October 27th. I'm older than you. <laughs> um, we're both elder millennials. That's uh-huh. good for us. Yes. Geriatric millennials, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> um, really great. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, What advice do you have then, I mean, beyond what you've already said, for somebody who's got some art, they don't know what to do with it, uh, and they just opened up some social media accounts, and they're like, I'm I'm starting from from nowhere. nowhere. How do I I become become a person who people people recognize and follow and and (laughs) buy things from (laughs) and support via not even money, money, but just like showing showing up at things? Yeah. No. Yeah. Where where do you take that first step? How do you do that? Oh, man. Uh, we'll just say like Instagram for a sure. reference or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think if, if I were to narrow it down to a few tips, yeah, you know, yeah, for yeah. artists, um, yeah, I would say, we don't have to do a right. full hour lecture now. <laughs> I would say, um, take stellar, well-lit, well-balanced photos of your work. Um, uh, I cannot tell you how many photos I've, I've seen across the years that, are like, you know, the photos on the ground and then you see half of the image or it's crooked or like half of it is in shadow or, you it's know, like glare on it. You can see the person taking the picture. Yeah. in the. <laughs> we curators, we want to we want to see the work that you will be sharing with the gallery or mm-hmm. sharing with like a market or sharing with a venue. Um, what do you want to convey to other people and taking a photo that's representative of that? Um, so having well like great high res photos, um, having a website is critical. So it doesn't have to be like a domained website. Um, I it see that be all the time. I'm sorry. Anything. I know I keep yeah. interrupting yeah, you. Yeah, 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 but yeah. I do see that a lot now where people are like, well, I've got a Facebook. I'm like, no, no, man, no. For like, I think as cheap as eight bucks a month, you can get like a straight up me.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's, you know, or if that feels intimidating, like do the, I, I, like I don't care if it has that da 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 da. That Wix site, like that yeah, blah, 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 yeah. With a bunch it, doesn't, of numbers, it yeah. doesn't matter. Just like, like have one that shares your work and have one that shares the work that you want to convey with the world. Um, so photos, website, and then um, sharing a you know strong and consistent voice. Um, so I think one thing that um, like I get it on the other side, but you know, as a, as a curator or as a person who engages with lots of different art, I just want to see what you are hoping to achieve your goal with. And so, you know, for some people that could be like, I want to show in coffee shops. For some people that could be like, I want to be in markets. I want to be in an exhibition space. Um, share work that is consistent within that. And so, um, you know, share all of your paintings in one category, share all of your ceramics work in another category, share all of your stickers in another category or like tabs on your website. So, so that I can, as a person who's sifting through your website or like moving through it rather quickly, I can like look and scan through your work and understand what you do. Um, I think a lot of people just want to, your digital space almost the same way you would if you had a booth. 
Don't yeah. just throw everything right. down and go, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So I like a really good example is we, we had a call, gosh, like eight months ago or something. And someone, um, was a really strong artist and they were sharing their installation work and it was like super strong photo, super strong photo, really understood what they were doing. Picture of the plates that they also make picture of the mug that they also make. And, and I, as I was looking over it, I was like, this is all beautiful. Do I want to buy those plates? A hundred percent. Like they're gorgeous and I love them. But what do you, what do you want us to show in the gallery? You know, what do you want us to show in the space? Yeah. Um, so, so really thinking about um, like separating those things a little bit and, and conveying uh, what, what your goals are ultimately. Um, uh, I think another tip would just be, you know, consistency. And so consistency on whatever social media that is uh, and uh, consistency in making art. Um, that can be whatever speaks to you if that's a half an hour in the morning, if that's at a specific amount of time, if that's a specific number of hours per week, if that's a day of the week. Um, but just consistently putting yourself in, in like the art making space. Mm. Critical, critical. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, gosh, to, to deep dive further into like, say Instagram, I mean, I could go on marketing forever. I love it. I love it. I think it's fascinating. Um, <laughs> but I think, um, more specifically if we're ta to like take Instagram, for example, I think stories, uh, I would recommend like stories are used for like behind the scenes, like personal things, like things that you're interested in, um, as a human, um, as an artist, art that you love how messy your studio is, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Um, use your posts as your portfolio. Um, so to, to easily and visually convey to the people who are looking for and looking at your work. Mm. Um, so have, you know, like all of your posts be your work and have a separate account for your personal things. Um, because I, while I love cats and I love, fancy dinners <laughs> it's it's visually confusing when you see like art table dinner friends cat art and you're like I don't if I have to spend a significant amount of time trying to find your work statistically speaking most people will fall off yeah you know so you want to make it easy for yeah. people I mean I, I come um, off a little bit from the SEO yeah. blogging world too yes so. You know, like they always say, if you're not in the first five results, you're right. not there. Right, right. And so if you think about your, your posts pages the same way, like you you want it to be consistent to the work that you're trying to convey. Yeah. Again. Um, reels. That makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't always come across as like super intuitive to somebody that doesn't stop and think about it. Right. But um, yeah. Right. I just recently cleaned up a bunch of posts. I was like, I have almost 500 posts and it's right. so random. Some right. Of them are so random. <laughs> right. Right. And it's cool to share your life. And that's that's yeah. fantastic and amazing. But um, I didn't know about stories for a long time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then reels, it's like, um, you know, that's where you can uh, I, I personally recommend, you know, using the trending songs or sounds um, and uh, and talking videos and, um, you know, songs and things that you personally love. Um, if you lean too hard in one of those directions, it won't take off at the same speed. Um, so kind of leaning into and accessing all of these things, again, like that's what the algorithm loves for mm. both TikTok and, and Instagram. But um, that variety, uh, but also you're able to speak to your audience. So, for example, if you're always doing like trending videos and songs over and over and over again, people don't get a sense of your actual personality, yeah. which is so important. Yeah, like we uh, talked about earlier yeah. is like, how do you find that line between trying to, you know, give the algorithm what it wants, but then yeah. also trying to be like, I'm a person here, though. Too. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. And and so like leaning into and sharing who you actually are within that process, um, which leads to the last point, And that's really like uh, like authenticity is key. Mm. You know, I think people are drawn to authentic story um, always. And, and people can tell immediately, they can see right through it, like this person is authentic or this feels sales pitchy or this feels weird. Yeah. Um, people need other people. I think, you know, we're, we're meant to live with and work with and thrive with other people. 
And when people share who they are and share their authenticity and share their stories, you don't know the impact that you're going to have on other people. So like there might be some person looking at Instagram or TikTok alone in their room, feeling alone in their world. But because you're sharing your story, you're helping them feel less alone. And you don't know the level of impact or the ripple that you'll have in the world overall when you are authentic and you do share yourself. Um, so does that mean like giving away your mother's maiden name and your password and your first car? No. But <laughs> does that mean like if you if you're like, you know, super serious, be super serious. If you're like silly and quirky, be silly and quirky, you know, like, like just be you and, yeah. and, and be brave within that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just do it too, because mm -hmm. I've been getting better at all the ways that, that I try to get out there and do things, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, it's a painfully slow process sometimes, yeah. but you just got to keep doing it. And Absolutely. Look, I started with zero followers and like no subscribers on the podcast. And it, people said, when, when you, you start, start these kind of things, things mm -hmm. you should tell everybody you know and yeah. ask them to follow you. Uh -huh. And I was like, I'm just going to see if I can do this organically. Yeah. And then went from zero followers to 666 followers. The what? Mark of the Beast. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was so happy because I, I could just make silly stories with that. But um, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the podcast now, the third year, just coming out of the finishing the third year of it yeah got like 15 times more p downloads than it did the Amazing. first year and almost two and a half times as many as it did last year so wow it's not something that i was just really good at and took off with yeah but, uh, had a lot of bumps and bruises but that's the totally. whole point of the podcast too and yeah. it sounds like what you're doing is trying to let people in on yeah. the process and where you hit snags and yeah what doesn't work and what does work mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of being like I figured it out myself. myself. You, you can too. Do. Right, right. And to embrace that level of mistake making, like yeah. you didn't learn how to walk or ride a bike mm -hmm. immediately on the first try. Like you yeah. fell a lot and you had to so that you could get yourself back up and try again. Yeah. And now you're a person who does those things. Yeah. I don't know if you ride your bike, but <laughs> you walked I, in here. so <laughs> I do know how to ride a bike. All right. Um. <laughs> but it's like, I mean, it's it's like with anything, whether it's art or writing or social media like yeah you might suck at first and social media is funny because you you're like you might suck super publicly where people might see it but that level of vulnerability is super important and yeah. we need to have that in, a, in like our culture and 99 mm -hmm. percent of the people that would you know go on instagram and be like mm -hmm. this sucks you're terrible right are people who are probably mentally ill yeah and or um People who want to be doing that same thing and right. are upset that yeah, yeah. they didn't have the encouragement, support, or right. whatever to, to take that first step and do it themselves. Yeah, yeah. Or, or you know, I think... I'm not trying to throw shade either. Like I, <laughs> it's, all of those things are said. Mental illness yeah. is said and people who want to be creative but mm -hmm. bought into the idea that, well, that's not realistic. Right, right, right. And people, I mean, people might gossip or people might say shitty things i you lost know? friends when i quit teaching and said i'm gonna write novels and then the book came out i'm still doing the podcast and i've had a few people that are just like yeah. you know I, you don't, don't seem like you have your life, life together i'm like i actually feel better than i ever have right. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. i don't want to paint every teacher with a bad brush because there's great teachers oh I've yeah seen oh yeah but i've also worked with teachers who are like Oh, that's so, so annoying, annoying that this kid, kid has a 503, 503 or what do they call it? 504 plan. plan. Yeah. Like, annoying. It's just how their brain works. It's Let's how they, it's what they need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I'm, and then there's, there's not a teacher shortage. There's, like, teachers are pushed to the absolute brink. The number of teachers are still there. They just don't want to work for bad systems. For a bad system where a lot of it now has <laughs> just been like, this is what you're going to teach. This is how you're going to teach it. Right. Make sure they're ready for the test. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not really why I got I know. No, into this. this. I mean, tried this to make a difference. That's not why I do this. <laughs> yeah. But some teachers do still work really well within that system. Yeah. They just kind of have to figure out their own way to do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And thank God for them. And thank God for people like... Uh, I was going to say, like, so that's a little uh, grandiose and narcissistic. 
thank you for people like you though who uh. are um also out there mm-hmm. that's a good way to say it uh. who are also out there trying to help people with uh making their creative dreams a reality whether mm-hmm. that's like you said some people mm-hmm. just want to be shown in a coffee shop yeah and if they do brilliant. awesome brilliant and if some people say no man i want to make like money and just do this yeah. and that be my thing yeah cool go brilliant. make it happen and yeah. don't let anybody tell you otherwise yeah yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. so thank yeah. you for being the educator and uh, uh mentor and encourager of all the the people oh. through this this is really special and it was um great having you on to talk yeah it's such a pleasure yeah so fun to talk and and get to know you better yeah and shout out to matt bliss and derek moore who both talked you up and said what a nice person you were before Aww. before i met you too oh thank you <laughs> Cultivate is an arts organization based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we offer a contemporary art gallery, fine arts education, and artist resource center. Within this space, we will share six exhibitions a year, 100 plus classes a year, and our artist resource center, which will be year-round art business courses, an artist business library, ongoing events to connect and support the arts community here in West Michigan, but also regionally and nationally. We soft launch on January 6th, and we grand open with a showstopper on February 3rd, and we'll just continue from here on out. We're so excited. Did you pick 2-3 on purpose? I did not. No. Okay. I was just wondering if you had done that as the marketer. It was like first Friday, but... (laughs) Okay. I'll edit it out and be like, yes, I did think of that. Thank you for noticing. (laughs) All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. Thank it's you so uh, much. been great getting to know you. Thanks Absolutely. For the tea. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Did you pick two, three, two, three on purpose? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. That was Mallory Shotwell, the founder and director of Cultivate here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Check them out in the show notes. I'll have links to all their stuff uh, and all Mallory's stuff. Really cool art happening in Grand Rapids, and there's about to be a lot more thanks to this organization. And check out their holiday guide. Buy some local stuff. Or at least local to me. Bye! Mwah! Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Weird, right?